You want to talk about a scandal? Let's discuss the New York Times reporting about how Donald Trump tried to use the Department of Justice to kill a criminal investigation into a Turkish-owned bank. Let's talk about Turkeygate, because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So given the breakneck pace of the scandals, you know, it's like a, a scandal an hour in the Trump administration these days, you may have missed this story. And let me tell you, this story is staggering. And frankly, it can probably be summed up in just three headlines. Let's start with the headline in the New York Times. That's the publication that first broke this story. The headline reads, Turkish bank case showed Erdogan's influence with Trump. Erdogan is, of course, the president of the Republic of Turkey. That's the first headline. Turkish bank case showed Erdogan's influence with Trump. Here's the second headline from the Daily Beast. Trump tried to shut down criminal case against Turkey's Halk Bank after request from Erdogan, says report. So Halk Bank is the Turkish-owned bank that's involved in this scandal. And then the third headline from the Intelligentsia, which kind of sums it up and cuts right to the chase, quote, Trump corruptly meddled with probe into crimes by bank in Turkey. So let me just try to hit the high points, perhaps the low points, and summarize this story for you. So there is a Turkish-owned bank, Halk Bank, that is allegedly violating the laws of the United States, and it's being investigated by the federal prosecutors at the Southern District of New York United States Attorney's Office, headed up at the time by Jeffrey Berman, the U.S. Attorney. We learned that Turkish President Erdogan was pressuring Donald Trump to kill the investigation into this Turkish-owned bank, Halk Bank. Why? Well, we learned from the reporting that the investigation might implicate Erdogan's family members and some of his political allies. So he tries to put the pressure on Donald Trump, urging him to kill the Halk Bank investigation. So what does Trump do? Well, Trump decides to reach out to his then acting uh, Attorney General, Matthew Whitaker. Remember him? He was the acting Attorney General for you know all of a minute, a few months in reality. And you only need one headline to sum up who this character was, Matthew Whitaker, quote, FBI investigated fraudulent Miami company connected to acting attorney general Matthew Whitaker. So Matthew Whitaker tells the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, Jeffrey Berman, to basically kill the Halk Bank investigation. And Jeff Berman says, no, not going to do it. We're going to keep investigating. And then, of course, Matthew Whitaker is gone. You know, he remained acting attorney general for about a cup of coffee. And then he was gone. And enter who? Bill Barr. You know, and you thought it couldn't get any worse that we had Matthew Whitaker as the acting U.S. Uh, uh, attorney general. And yet it got so much worse under the tenure of Bill Barr. So what does Bill Barr do? Bill Barr calls a meeting with Jeffrey Berman and says, you know, you should really try to back off that Halk Bank investigation. In fact, why don't you just wrap it up with a, a nice little deal where Halk Bank will just, you know, pay a fine and it will all go away. Of course, that would then protect 
Erdogan's family members and political allies from any criminal exposure, right? From having their wrongdoing exposed if we kept investigating the crimes being committed by Halk Bank. You know what Jeffrey Berman told his boss, the Attorney General, Bill Barr? No, that's not the way we do things in the Southern District of New York. And he kept investigating. And you'll recall, Bill Barr went on to fire Jeffrey Berman and tried to install as the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, as the top prosecutor in that office, tried to install a golfing buddy of Donald Trump's. But Jeff Berman was a couple of steps ahead of Bill Barr, and he managed to thwart that. So folks, against that backdrop, let's turn to some of the New York Times reporting on the Halk Bank case. Quote, the president was discussing an active criminal case with the authoritarian leader of a nation in which Mr. Trump does business. Trump reported receiving at least $2.6 million in net income from operations in Turkey from 2015 through 2018 while Donald Trump was president, according to tax records obtained by the New York Times. The article continues. Former White House officials said they came to fear that the president was open to swaying the criminal justice system to advance a transactional and ill-defined agenda of his own. Can I put it more plainly? Donald Trump was willing to corrupt the Department of Justice and the criminal justice system in furtherance of his own financial interests. You know, folks, this makes the Iran-Contra scandal look like a shoplifting incident. This makes Watergate look like petty theft covered up with some schoolboy lies. And while I'm on Watergate, remember that more than a dozen government officials were indicted and imprisoned behind the Watergate scandal. Right? A scandal that really involved a second-rate burglary and a clumsy cover-up. This scandal involving the president, two attorneys general, and goodness knows how many other aiders and abettors, this scandal? How many government officials will need to be investigated, indicted, and imprisoned behind Turkey Gate? Well, we won't be able to answer that question until January because, you know, justice is sometimes very slow in coming and then it comes all at once. And in January, when we have a law-abiding president and a law-enforcing attorney general, no Matthew Whitakers, no Bill Barrs, trying to kill criminal investigations, to, you know, help the president's financial interests, then we will begin to see justice. Then we'll see grand jury investigations. Then we'll see indictments. Then we'll see trials. Then we will see the corrupt politicians who have put this country and its people through so much during the past four years. Then we will see them held accountable for what they've done. I'm sure of it. Justice will come. And justice matters. In the meantime, folks, we are counting down to Election Day. Let's get out there. In numbers too big to rig. In numbers too real to steal. And let's vote them out. Please stay safe. I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.